Hello guys and welcome back to Bite Size Security. I'm your host Jimmy and as usual I'm bringing you another hacking video but first a little comment on why I haven't uploaded for the last week or so a bit longer. It's been a bit of a uh, while but anyway I'm back and the reason for the little hiatus was that I took on a challenge and it's this one. The ProLab Dante by Hack the Box. Definitely a challenge and it, it was it was tough. It was very, very hard. It's one of the six ProLabs. It's the first one. I think everyone that tries them starts with Dante. After that, I think I will take on Offshore. I think you're just supposed to go one after the other as they are listed here. Maybe if you want to go more red teaming, it's the one with the swords. These are quite hard. I know that the APT lab is insane, but yeah, so I did Dante. Very, very fun box. Loads of different techniques that you have to go through. Really, really, really nice. And definitely a test of perseverance. You, you really have to employ all of the different techniques that you learn in the CPTS course that I keep plugging all the time. It's a perfect test for the OSCP, so like to practice for the OSCP. I know we've been doing all of these boxes, but uh, doing this pro lab, I think is literally like the best kind of test to see if you've got what it takes to at least get into the pen testing world. And yeah, if you stick to it, if you just try, just try harder as they say you'll get there but it's 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 definitely tough but any enough of that let's get to the video so today we are doing another proving grounds box and we are on the windows boxes and we're doing craft and so i've got the vpn launched let me put this let me close this and let me close this as well like that i can keep that closed collapsed and let's get to it guys so let me also close this and as usual we will start as we always do we'll do prep notes oh, by the way i've got the vpn running of course i wouldn't start without it so we've got prep notes dash p I, I kind of forgot my commands, you know, because I only use this when I make these videos. But anyway, uh, prep notes. Uh, let me just do dash H to see. So, yeah, I definitely want it in proving grounds. So prep note craft should be fine like this. And then I go into craft. It was created. And then I open craft like so. And in here as well, if I go and showcase, craft should be there. Perfect. Let me take the IP and paste it here. And then we can just start enumeration. Let's go into enum external. You know what? Let me take this off because it's getting quite warm. Like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. And let's begin. So we do scan as usual. We call this rust scan.txt. And down here we do recon on the IP like so. And that will take a little while, while because it's Windows, but um, we'll see. The rust scan should be quite quick. So let's go into here, external rust scan and then type ANSI to filter it. We've got one port 80 already. What we can do is just go to it to pass time. And what do we find here? Craft, okay. You know what? Let's just take a screenshot of that already because I know within the HTTP, I will put a picture. So let's go into enum external and then HTTP here and put that screenshot there. And what else do we have? We have about us. Okay, so this is a rather static page once again, but we do have an upload. Of course, don't worry, I'm not skipping the enumeration. I'm just doing stuff to pass time while uh, Recon and Ruskan are doing their thing. So I'll just put this here. And after I'll say that we have a file upload 
And let's see where Roscan is or where this port scan is. Quick. Okay, so this one is done. So let's go to recon. General, we can put the quick scan here. We can put, yeah, we can start with enumeration. It seems like we only have one port, port 80. So let's delete the other ones like so. We can go into port 80 and just start putting everything over. So the end map and then Nikto like so. And then the curl we'll put here. Dear Surge, by the way, I've changed. Okay, so let me show you this. You remember how I was always running Dear Surge, but GoBuster was running anyway with Auto Recon? Well, it was as simple as just saying, I want a different Dear Buster tool. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't notice things, but yeah, I could have just chosen Dear Surge and it does it for me. Now, the only thing I need to find is which word list it uses. So which word list does auto recon automatically use? Because it, if it uses the one I use, then it's all perfect. I don't need to run it myself, except for the files word list, but I'll do that regardless anytime. Anyway, Roscan is done. So, oh, this is printing a lot. Usually I would also exclude certain certain um, status codes, but that's a different story. Let's go to Ruscan, copy this general information, put it here. Then where were we? We have the screenshots. So let's go to what web. And by the way, we can remove GoBuster here. this and then I can also go on other uh, on the templates and go here 80 and remove go buster there too because I no longer need that just so that from now on it will always copy it correctly so yeah I think that's the recon done and we can start enumerating the f uh, by the way no the deer search quite a lot of things it's, it's still running but we have a file upload on the first page so let's go inspect that uh, anything else the full TCP is not done UDP is not done okay let's start enumerating the page like this okay so what do we have Join our team, submit your resume. Okay, so probably uploading a PDF file or some type of Word document. Um, let's try and touch text, test.text. Echo, hello world into test.text and upload that. Let's go here. Proving grounds, boxes, crafts, enum, external, test, upload. File is not valid. Please submit an ODT file. Okay, I know what this is. So let's first get to this. We have a an upload functionality. Um, so this is probably the exploit vector. So this could now be two things. So either way, it's a client side attack attack. So we potentially have some sort of cron job or whatever that executes that file that we upload. So it's like a phishing kind of client side. So we have to, we have to send something to the web page and it will be clicked, I guess, every 10 seconds. And if we're successful, we get a reverse shell back. Now you can do this manually and uh, I can, I will explain how to do it manually, but I will use tools because we are practicing for OSCP and these things sometimes take time. 
and we're not trying to waste time because in the last OSCP exam I was too slow. So I want to use tools to just be quick. So let's go to useful, which is where I keep my tools. And here I have two tools. I have macro generator and I have bad ODF like this. These two tools I will explain now. So let's go to macro generator GitHub. Let's hope I find the one I used. Is it this? Yes, this is the one I used as well. And you know, when you're doing the course for OSCP, there is client side attacks. And obviously you learn how to do them. And I tested this and it works absolutely fantastically. It does it all very quickly. But then there's another one. Given that we have to upload an ODT file, there is also bad OF, what is it? Bad ODT, GitHub. Yeah, bad OF, bad ODT, there you go. And this one creates a malicious ODF document to leak net NTLM creds. So they both do different things. One uploads uh, a ODT file. I wish I could show you. I can actually. It will take a bit of time, but I can. It will... Okay, so an ODT file, you can essentially convert to a zip file right and if you then unzip it there will be a contents.xml file and within this context.xml file at the bottom of the lines you can uh, what is it href it just grep for href and you can kind of add a random test JPEG that browses to your machine. And when it does, while you have a server running, you might get a an net NTLM hash through Responder. And this, um, this uh, binary automates this. So I'll show you the Responder and everything, but I won't show you how to manually create it. If you want to see it manually created, I can create a short video where I showed both of these methods manually. But essentially, we're practicing for SCP. We want to do it quick. So I'll try both and one of them should work. So let's see how they both work. Okay, so let's start with the bad ODT file. Bad ODT, H, what do we need? A listener. And wait, let's first, oh, that was it already. Let's first go here and take some notes. So, we are most probably dealing with, oh, and I also forgot to upload a screenshot of this. So, we create a random test.txt file with hello world inside it, inside it as usual, and try to upload it. we then get this page. It tells us that we have to upload a, an ODT file, uh, which hints to us having to use a client side macro type attack 
this I can take away. Let's try two different attack techniques. Um, once we will try to get a hash, and the other time we will get the back end user, I guess, to execute our macro. So these are two different attacks, right? Let's go. Add link like this, and then what can I do? Craft, exploit. Like this. And let's go. Okay. And so we have now here created a bad odt.py file, dot odt file. And what we can now do is do pseudo responder. What is it? Um, turn zero, I guess. Oh, yeah. Dash I turn zero. So let's try that first. Bring this over and we upload this generated bad ODT file. And then we wait. Your resume was submitted. It will be reviewed by our staff shortly. So this is what I said. There's most probably an automated user executing whatever we upload so that we get some type of response back. And there is our hash. Damn, that worked. Okay, so we get a hash back as the cyber geek. Now, what do we do? We take this hash and we crack it. If this was it, that was easy. So let's take this hash. Um, we can cancel this. Uh, okay, so let's take a screenshot of this. Do you see how easy it is with this tool? It, 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 it makes more sense to use these tools. Okay, so we use a tool called Oh, wait, let me just paste this and then take the link to the tool here called bad ODT or bad OF, I, no, bad ODT from this GitHub page. And generate malicious dot odt file that we can then upload and then as the page says an admin will review the file given that they touch the file we can potentially get a call back with a hash by using sudo responder dash i turn zero. And we do. So we take this. Let's take it off. Okay precise with this like that and then we can do touch hash and we open it um, like this and then we move hash to loot and then we start messing with it because I don't think that Oh, I didn't save it. I don't think that a hash cat likes this like that. So, hmm. 
.NET and TLM v2. Let me check. So let's do hashcat help grab net. Oh, NTLM v2. V2. There's going to be a few. NTLM v2. There you go. So it'll be 5,600. Okay. And it will probably just be this. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct like that. So let's try. Let's go into loot and do hashcat dash m5600 hash user share word list rock you dash o cracked okay so the hash is correct so let's let this run and maybe we'll find the password like this exhausted huh What was the other 27,100? Exhausted. So I'm guessing it cannot find a password because Hashcat is very, very, very fast. Okay. We try using Hashcat to crack this hash with the following command uh, but but to no avail and then I can just take a screenshot of this clear exhausted like this so we can do here we do bad o d t and then here we use the macro generator so let's try that one because either one of them will work uh, let's go back here we don't need that anymore and let's do python 3 macro generator dash h and then what do we need uh, actually let's take a screenshot of this like that okay so we need an l host so that's us so let's take this and then we need p ports um, of the attacker listener i'm guessing that's we will have to host a server where we host our reverse shell so port 8000 and then dash r will just be um, 8000 shell axe like this i guess because it says here the default is win but when i host a share or when i host the server like this there is no win i could create a folder win but i don't so i'll just do this that should work so um let me just kill this and do that and it's doing its magic nice okay so let me just take this command 
and we do get this. And so we are do working with an ODT file, which is LibreOffice. We're going to have to work with LibreOffice, which is a free word, basically, because we're on Linux and open source for life. And we could do this all on a Windows box. We could use this. You can see if you have done the OSCP path, the course, all of these things come in handy and it just generates it for you. It's much, much, much easier. Of course, you need to know how to do it manually. This part, by the way, is a pain, but it is what it is. But this just does it for you. It's great. And we will use this. And I will now show you how. Now we need to create a um, malicious ODT. Ah. File. Okay, so let's do that. So we do here and we open writer. Do we open writer or do we open calc? Uh, I think we open writer. Here I write, please subscribe just for the sake of it. And then we will go into tools and then we'll go into customize. No, that's after. I need to remember how to do this. Macros, organize macros, basic. Untitled, new, let's call this pawns, and there we go, yes, that's it, and then here, we take this, and we paste it here, and then we change this up a bit, because we're not on win, but we're on this address, 8000, like this, and is everything else correct? Our shell is not, we haven't generated the shell yet. So let's take this name because we are going to generate the shell. We save this macro. Um, we call the ODT file pwned. The ODT, yeah, just pwned. And then we save this, we close this, sorry. And then we go here and we go on customize. And then we go on open document so that if the document is opened, if the document is opened, sorry about that, we'll execute a macro. And then we select the macro we have just created. Here's the main function. We press okay. And we go on OK like this. I should take screenshots of every single thing I do here. But I'll do this after the video. I promise. But anyway, this should now work. Let me save this. And then, let me go here. Let's go on Rev Shells. Uh, Rev Shells. Let's put... RIP there and any port we decide and then we want MSF Venom and we want a stageless reverse TCP shell and we want to call this one our shell Ooh. so I said here 8000 shell.exe, but it still gave me our shell. So I guess it doesn't matter, but I want to call my shell, my my binary our shell, just so that it's correct. So let me go back to here and execute that, not in this folder. Let's go to craft and then exploit like that. Here's the pwned ODT file and we'll create our reverse shell, our shell. Bam. And then what we can do is listen on port 8000 as we do. So just listen. Oh no, 
48,000, like that. And what else do we do? Uh, no, sorry. What am I doing? So, let me just take this. A bit all over the place because I, I want to do this as smoothly as possible. We need to create a malicious ODT file, which I'll explain, and create a reverse shell that the ODT file will kind of download, I guess, like this. And have we created it like that? Okay, so here we can now host the server and here we can now listen. What did we listen on? 9001. Okay. Now that should be it. Like this. Let's go on the uh, places. Let's go to workspace one more time. Proving grounds, boxes, crafts, exploits, pawns. Let's open that one more time with LibreOffice Writer just to make sure. So please subscribe as usual. Is everything correct here? Let's go and organize macros. Pawns. Standard. Pawns. Yes, that's correct. Let's look at our macro. It will go to our host on port 8000. It will download our shell using PowerSploit. A uh, PowerShell, sorry. It will save it on Windows Tasks our shell. And our shell is called our shell. And then it will execute it from there. That is correct. And then when will it do this? It will do this. Oh, no, let's not click too many things. It will click. It will do this on opening the document. Sounds good to me, guys. This should work. And our shell is called our shell. Let's do this. Let's upload this thing because the NTLM hash we couldn't we couldn't uh, crack. So this should work. Pawned. Am I listening on exploit? Yes, I am. Okay. Let's go. And now we wait. And now we wait. It should first hit the server because it's downloading. There you go. And now it should hit a reverse shell. Damn it. Okay. Now we need to debug. So a few things here. We know that um, the macro is correct. The macro is correct because it is downloading our shell.exe. But something might not be right with our a our reverse shell. So let's see. Um, let's go back to places, workspace, proven grounds, boxes. Oh, I hate debugging, but I guess it's part of it. And let's do this. So it's definitely executing our macro. That's correct. Yeah, this it's doing. And this as well. And our macro is called our shell. That's also correct. Let's create, let's remove it. And let's go here and see. IP is correct. It's listening on port 9001. Our 
shell. Hmm. Listen, 9001. Maybe it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I don't know because I don't really see what I did wrong here. Craft. Exploits. Point. Please work. Oh, there you go. We got a reverse shell. There. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I did different here now. I don't know what I corrected. I guess sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But we got a reverse shell back. Let's make the most of this reverse shell. Great. Um, let's take a screenshot. Damn, I, 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 I freaking love hacking. It's, it's just so fun. Like that. So, boom. We get a reverse shell back. The notes are complete. I, I, I think I was pretty thorough in explaining to you guys how I did it. So let me just enumerate. So let's go with, uh, let's enumerate. And then here, as usual, we add a link and we say uh, showcase crafts and then internal like that. Let's enumerate. And then we put this on the main screen and we say, who am I? And we are the cyber geek. This is a bit ironic, but uh, yeah, we're the cyber geek. Let's go. And what do we usually do? We do, who am I at groups? And let's take a screenshot of that. Who am I? Groups. And then what else do we do? We do who am I? Priv. We could do who am I all, but because of the screenshots, I know what I'm doing, guys. I know what I'm doing. Slowly but surely. Uh, who am I? Priv. And <laughs> screenshot. So we do not have any type of privilege that should be interesting. Let me try one more thing. Let's go into my notes. And let's go into Windows Privilege Escalation. And let's do this command because I like doing system info like this and a big shout out to um, a guy that I have considered a friend and a mentor and this is his blog um, this guy is amazing Justin Barfit what a G uh, he's a pen tester and his blog is absolutely insane. It's amazing. It's got all the different um, escalation paths, ma manual, whatever you need. Literally, this is the blog. It's really great. And more is coming. I don't know what. It's been like that for a while. But anyway, big shout out to him. It's, it's a great page. But basically, on his page, I found this command. So let's get back to the box. So system info, and it will just do system info in a more concise way. Like it will give you what's important. And that is indeed important. So let's do this again and take a screenshot like this. And then what else do we do? We go to the roots and we see we're gone. We've got a exam folder. So that's the folder of, I'm guessing, this um, website. 
and we are the cyber geek let's go into users okay so this is interesting and I'll explain the when uploading this file okay I'll explain it here okay so we have three users on this page on this host we know that the cyber geek is some sort of admin reviewing resumes so let's say HR but he is not the host of the website and because the host of the website is probably Apache but we have another user Apache who is hosting the website so maybe we can get more privileges through that user that could make sense because we don't have many privileges here obviously we also have to check different other paths as well like so let's go here and check the installed files because if there's binary or something that we can maybe exploit then that could be our exploit path we've got LibreOffice advanced threat protection photo viewer now this we could all kind of google and find out if, if there's any privilege escalations against these but let me go into c and try and fiddle with this zamp because let's try so let's try to no okay let's first go into it so zamp let's find the um, so hmm, uh, workspace proving grounds boxes crafts in external test or text upload so upload.php we're looking for upload.php let's go on google and see exam um index location see zamp ht docs so is there ht docs there is and there we have the upload.php okay that that was that was great so um inside of C Zamp ah. HT docs you can find the dot PHP files that the initial web server that we interacted with was hosting and there's index.php and upload.php maybe we can upload a reverse shell let's call it revshell.php to get a shell back as the apache user let's try that uh, internal link and then we can go uh, showcase crafts privesque and essentially 
this was internal as cyber geek and we are now going here and then here we will say privesk oh no 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 so uh, yeah cyber geek and then i guess we'll create another one for maybe later because we will become apache if what i'm doing it works so let's create a ref shell .php file and upload it to the um, um, C Sam HT docs folder. Actually, do we have permissions? By cackles. And we, I, I never really know how to read this, but the administrator has the same. Okay, so I have read and execute. Let me just test this. So I'll say touch null and I echo this into test.text. This is how you, oh no, sorry, not touch, but type. Uh, yes, test.text is there. Let's say echo hello world into test.text. We first need to check if we can indeed host a custom file on the web server. So we create test.text um, with the following commands like that. Um, this is how you create a file and then this like in Linux is how you just echo something into that file. And I will then take a screenshot of all of this to prove that I have write permissions into this folder. And not only that, but I can now on here, go to test.text and see hello world. Um, and indeed, we can browse to our file and view it. So what will we do? We will go back to Privesk and we will create touch ref shell dot PHP. Open here, uh, Privesk here like this, go there. Uh, ref shell and I particularly like for anything Windows and PHP no sorry for anything PHP I like this one this one's great and I'm not gonna listen on 9001 because I was listening on that before I'm gonna listen on 9001 because it's probably a cron job constantly executing my ODT file and I don't want that to constantly be activated so I'll just be on 9002 so like this i'll add that to ref shell save it let me screenshot this i like to take all of these screenshots for my notes um so let's create ref shell dot php And then we can host it. Oh, we already have the server hosting here. So let's close that and we can host it. And then let's go into our notes. 
and we're going to use set util to transfer our file here like that and then here we're going to input a host and then here we're going to say 8000 and what did we call our file we called it refshell.php and here as well refshell.php and that should work and there we should now have refshell.php let's create refshell and transfer it to the victim host let's take a screenshot that worked flawlessly and then we can open a listener on 9002 and we can take this link and then we can curl and go to refshell.php and we should get a reverse shell back and bam we do <laughs> that was great let's take a screenshot We can see that refshell.php is being hosted on the web server. So we can just curl to the um, host to the file on the host and get a reverse shell and we did and bam that worked let's enumerate and you can see it's always the same thing exploiting and then enumerating exploiting enumerating exploiting enumerating always the same thing it could get boring but it doesn't showcase crafts and then apache i guess no 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 um internal like that and then here ooh, uh, cyber geek let's create another one here and call it Apache like so and then we can go to Privesk here call this Apache like that and then we go there and so now let's enumerate again uh, who am I Apache <laughs> who am I let's take screenshots the videos get longer because I do extensively enumerate, but that's just so that, you know, the methodology, it, it has to be like that. Yeah, it, it really does. So who am I? Groups. And let's take a screenshot. Who am I? Groups. I think this is my favorite video to record I'm having a lot of fun here this is great and then who am I priv or oh, my favorite box rather you know I'm having a lot of fun with this box but it, it, it it's kind of obvious like the client side attack attack is just obvious it's one of the core things that you have to know for the OSCP so I immediately knew how to exploit this the part with the Apache you know, if you look at the user that you are and the users that are on the machine, it is likely that you might have to, especially on Windows, that you might have to get to those because they might have different privileges. On Linux, not so much because some privilege escalations can circumvent 
all of that, like porn kit. But sometimes porn kit isn't the intended path. Like for example, recently, oh, by the way, in my recent video, Blackgate, I said that I would double check on the write-up and see, did I go here and save the write-up? I didn't, I said I would, but I didn't. Basically, Blackgate, when I said strings, to analyze the binary this was supposed to be done with gdb or ghydra or gidra sorry gidra and that would have taken a long time but strings was much quicker anyway let's do poor my and then priv and what we have here And we see that indeed we have SE impersonates. Let me bring this up. Privilege. Permission. Enables. And this is very easy to exploit. And I'll show you. Um, let's escalate our privileges so we can take this add link like this showcase crafts privesque apache like that and then let's quickly just go back there and copy that go here uh, remove this so let's go back to my notes really quick and i'll run one command one more time because i need to show you something usually when you have anything below uh, anything below 2019 microsoft windows server 2019 you can run juicy potato but anything above um 2019 or 2019 you have to run prince poofer or rogue potato i like prince poofer so let's run prince spoofer and i'll go to the website let's go here and type prince poofer abusing impersonation it's very easy okay so let's just download the binary like this let's go here and do w get and then what can we do let's go to c users um apache by the way we didn't uh, are we still connected here or am i cyber geek let's go to c user and then uh, cyber geek i guess and then desktop and see if ah dear oh the cyber geek cyber geek dear desktop and see if the flag is here and it is so let's take a screenshot of that here and go to loot like that we have that flag just to make sure you know but here we are apache and we can do prince buffer so let's host the server again let's do cert util oh shit i didn't want to sorry for the swearing i didn't want to download ref shell but let's go to desktop Uh, and then we're not going to download ref shell but we're going to download prince buffer 64 exe like that let's take a screenshot and go to privesk apache after first firstly of course transferring the binary over 
to the coast. Like that. And then exploiting sprint print spoofer could not be any simpler. So you do take this print spoofer and then you do dash i. Let me just go on the website and see exactly how it works. So there's different usages. You can either do it on the machine itself. You can um, import netcats and then connect back to your machine or you can spawn a process that will then i could just like spawn powershell as a system administrator let's say but what i will do is just spawn a command so c cmd and that should work and it did <laughs> screenshot yeah this was a great machine great machine And bam again, we are root. It's anti-authority, but yeah, who am I? Anti-authority, like that. <laughs> no, I prefer root. No, like that. And so I can go to users administrator desktop there and we have proof dot text that was great i'm telling you guys dante has made me a much much better hacker really like going through with that um where is it prolapse dante i'm not showing you anything here Going through with this has really been great. It's hammered down a lot of the techniques that I needed to know. It's really taught me how to be precise with things. All throughout, I took the exact type of notes that I do here. So, I mean, a write-up, writing, publishing a write-up is illegal, but I have it, so that's great. Yeah, this has been Craft, and it was a very fun box and what did we do we found let me close this one more time because you know let me close that um what did we do we found a website that had an upload functionality where we had to do an odt file upload which pretty quickly told us that we have to do some sort of client-side attack with a macro odt means right libre office so if it had been an XLXC file, or I don't know what the Windows Word extensions are, then we would have had to do a macro on Word, but it was ODT, which is LibreOffice. So anyway, we used macro generator to very quickly give us a command that we can import into uh, input into a macro in LibreOffice Writer upload it and that would be touched by the cyber geek whom first we tried to get his hash but we couldn't crack it so with a different technique by a binary called bad odt so definitely have both in your arsenal and try both but turns out that this one worked um we had a macro and the cyber geek touched it opened the document and we got a reverse shell we then enumerated as the cyber geek and found that we have two users on the box uh, apart from the administrator and one of them was apache and there was a website obviously this one being hosted uh, on apache if we look at the uh, nmap notes let's go here showcase craft here we can see apache so the apache user uh, was on the machine probably not for nothing and we didn't really have many privileges with uh, the cyber geek so we thought we could maybe upload a malicious reverse shell on the exam ht docs folder where the website is being hosted and for example upload.php was loaded we did that caught a reverse shell and we then were apache 
look at our privileges one more time with who am I slash priv and we saw that we have SE in person at privilege and this is quite easy to exploit. It's either juicy potato or prince poofer slash rogue potato, always the same thing. Once you do it more and more time, it gets easier and we got admin. And this has been it. it uh, this has been craft. It has been your boy Jimmy once again. I'm back now again with the videos. I'll try and get another video up this weekend or at least this week. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Please like, subscribe if you liked the video, share it. This was extremely fun and I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.